Hi, it's Alejandro for The Audio Brewers. And in this video, I'm just going to make a quick tutorial on how we will create a cave effect using our AB reverb and our AB delay. So I have created here a session, which is pretty basic. It's just got one mono track and one stereo out. And for the mono track, we have recorded a voice that goes like this. Hello? 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 Is there anybody in there? Okay, so it's pretty simple, but let's just say that we wanted to have this voice sort of inside of a cave, you know, with the reverberation and the echo that a cave produces. And it should have like a special awareness in case we wanted to pan this to different sites. So first I'm just going to work in stereo. I'm going to create this for a stereo setup. And then I'm just going to move to Dolby Atmos so that you can listen to the results both for a simple stereo mix or for a more advanced Dolby Atmos mix where the voice is an object, yet you have a bed that is reverberating. So I'm going to start by creating a group track. And because AB Reverb and AB Delay work in Ambisonics, this group track is going to be in Ambisonics. I'm going to make it first order. And I'm going to call it Cave. Next, I'm going to send my main track to our caved group track. It's going to be a pre-fader send. And this way, if we go to our mixer and we press play. Hello? 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 You can see that even if I lower the volume of my main track, our send is still receiving audio. So I guess that the first thing we will do is insert an AB reverb. I'm just going to lower my drive volume. And out of the box, it sounds like this. Hello? 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 Okay, so I could create the color of a cave from the scratch, but there is a preset here that could help us get started, which is our cave preset. And because this is an Ambisonics track, I'm just gonna make sure that the preset is working in Ambisonics. And let's press play again. Okay, so this sounds cool. And if we mix it with our dry signal. Hello? 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 So I'm just going to lower the pre-delay of my early river because I wanted to glue with my original voice. Hello? 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 Okay, so this seems to work. And now I'm going to add an AB delay. We just make sure that the input is in Ambisonic and the output is in Ambisonics. And this time we're gonna leave the dry playing because we want our original reverb to pass, even though it's gonna have some delay bounces. And right out of the box, it sounds like this. Hello? Hello? So the first thing I'm going to do is make the rate to be time rate instead of being musical. And I'm going to create a first bounce. So in my head, the first bounce when you scream on a cave will be like a close bounce. So I'm just gonna make it a bit fast. Hello. Let me just disable the reverb while I work in my delay. Hello? 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 Okay, this sounds fine. And now I don't want it to be exactly in the same position where my original voice is, because I can imagine that in a cave, the reverberations will come from different places. So I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit. Hello. Okay. And now I'm going to make a second reverb that is going to come from the other side. Again, I will remove my musical rate and I'm going to make it time-based. Hello? 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 Okay, this sounds fine. 
And now I'm going to create like a late delay because you're in a cave. So when you talk, you have the bounces coming from the left and from the right, but you also have the bounces coming from the very deep end of your cave. And this time it's going to come from the back. I'm gonna remove the musical rate, make it time-based, and let's listen to how this sounds. Hello? 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 Let's just apply a bit of a low pass. Hello? 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 Okay, let's create another, which again is gonna come from the back, but from the other side. Again with a low pass. Hello? 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 Is there anybody in there? Is there anybody in there? Okay, this sounds cool. And now for my first bounces, I'm just gonna have them bounce a little bit from above me. For stereo setups, this might not sound like much, but whenever you go to Atmos, this is gonna be awesome when you hear the bounces above your head. Hello? 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 Okay, this works nice. And now let's turn on our reverb again. Hello? Hello? Okay, so this sounds pretty cool. Now I'm going to press on my flip button as I feel this button increases the distance sensation that our late river has. Let's try how it sounds. Hello. 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 Is there anybody in there? Okay, this sounds pretty cool. Let's just say that we're done. And the best part is that because the panner of my dry track is linked to the panner of my group track, it doesn't matter if I move my voice to the left or to the right, the reverb and the delay are always going to be aware of the position of the voice and they're going to follow it. So if I start playing with the panning while the voice moves, So this is pretty cool, and this is how you do this type of effects for a stereo mix. So now that I have my stereo mix ready, if I wanted to work it in Dolby Atmos, all I would have to do is go to my ADM and create a new basic Atmos mix. So as you can see, now my two main tracks are being routed to my standard bed, which is this one, I'll put it on my right. And then from my standard bed, I am sending the signal to my render track, which is this one, I'll put it on my right. So I have my main tracks going to the bed and the bed going to my renderer. If I press play, you can see that there is signal, but there is no sound. And that is because if I open my outputs, even though the renderer has been created, it's disconnected. Now, if I were working with a 7.1.4 array, all I would have to do is route each of the signals to the speakers. But because I am working in stereo, what I'm going to do is create a new group track, a third order ambisonics track, and I'm going to call it rotator. I'll put it on my right. Now, the renderer contains the final signal of my mix, but it's not the signal that I'm going to be listening to. I will send my renderer signal to my rotator track, pre-fader, and then the rotator is gonna go to my stereo output, meaning that the rotator is going to re-encode my 7.1.4 signal to stereo, and then I am, I'm gonna be able to listen to that signal in my headphones. So if I press play, 
now I have signal. And the cool thing about adding the third or ambition extract in the middle is that if I open the ambition expander, I can configure this sound with a headphones output or with a speaker's output, and I can rotate my head horizontally, vertically, or diagonally without ever touching my Atmos signal. So if I press play now, I will be able to move my head and check the signals from different angles. So this is the way I prefer working when I'm working with my headphones or with a stereo setup on a mix that has to go to Dolby Atmos because I can be moving my head without ever touching the renderer. So the mix that I'm creating stays untouched and I can move my head freely. So now that I have my Atmos setup ready, I'll open my renderer and you can see that we have our standard bed here my dry channel is going to my standard bed and my cave effect is going to my standard bed. But let's just say that I wanted my dry signal, which is the dialogue track, to be an object. I want it to be an object because I want this signal to be moving, right? So all I have to do is open my ADM again. And now I'm going to select my track and create a new object from selected track. So you see that the object has been added, the object has been taken, and my track is now an object. I'll move it to my left. So because now my dialogue is an object, I can open my panner and I can move it freely. So this is pretty amazing because AB Reverb and AB Delay are still spatially aware. So no matter where you place the object, all the reflections happen based on this object's position. So even if I place my object on top of my head and I press play, So this opens a huge range of possibilities of all the things that you could do when working in your mix. And the good thing is that because AB Reverb and AB Delay work in Ambisonics, this thing that we just did here for a 7.1.4 setup is not only limited to stereo and Atmos. If you were working in a 5.1 setup, the reflections will adapt. If you are working in a custom speaker array, like an 11.1 or even if a dome, the reflections will adapt. So AB Reverb and AB Delay will create a whole sonic sphere of reflections that then will be translated to as many speakers as you have. And that is the beauty of these plugins. Let's just go through this track once more. And if you have any questions or any comments, just don't hesitate to write them below. And thank you for watching.